Hi, it's Paris from Epic Reviews, the tech channel, and I'm doing the setup and features video for the Google Nexus 4. Got the phone here, got it charged up, ready to put the SIM card in. So to start with, it takes a micro SIM card, that little what they call the SIM card tray out of the phone. That's why they included this little tool. So with your SIM card ejection tool, you wanna to take the little pointy part of it there. And there's a little hole right next to this SIM card tray, push the little pointy point into the hole and push, and it's not going to pop out very far, just a little bit, just enough to get your nail under it, and then you can pull out the SIM card tray. Now make note of which way you're pulling it out here. Then you need your SIM card. This takes a micro SIM card, a very small one. You may have it in a card like this. You punch it out and then you're ready to go. On this side there are the contacts and there's only one way that it will fit in this tray. Now you notice there's a cutout corner and here in the tray there's a cutout corner right there. So the only way the card can fit is like that. The contacts are going to end up being on the bottom. If you're doing it right it will fit nice and snugly inside there. You have it properly seated Line it up with the SIM card slot and just push it in until it goes all the way in. It's all the way flush. It's in. If you've charged up your battery, time to turn on the phone now see what it says. Hold the power button down for a couple seconds. You feel a little vibration. Here we go. Next it comes up to a list of Wi-Fi networks. You can join that and set up your Google account if you want, or at this point you can skip it. And they're telling you you're going to use your data plan data, so just be careful about that. Skip anyway. Or jump on your Wi-Fi network. Setting up your Google account, you'll want to do this if you do have it set up, but we don't have to right now. Um, and this is about, uh, it tells you they'll back up all your stuff on your Google account. You definitely, you bought a Google phone, you definitely want to have a Google account, but I don't want to enter my information right now. They want to know if you want to let them know where you are. Privacy settings. And let's call it. It's got a little better vibration to it. I like that better. Okay, Google services. Setup's complete. And they're telling you this is where you put your apps. There we go. Kind of funky looking default there. It sees the Wi-Fi it's not joined on. Apparently there's a text message waiting for me. I'm on a 3G here. Battery's mostly charged. There's the time, local time. And if you have Android 4.2, this probably looks pretty familiar to you. You can change the widget, you can change the background. Oh, choose some apps, oh yeah. Tells you how to put them on your home screen. Boy, there's not many on here. And your widgets as well. Take a look here in settings. Yeah, this is very standard Android 4.2, which is what it's supposed to be. And this is for sale for $349 if you buy it direct from Google. They do offer an 8 gigabyte version for $50 less, but since you can't expand the amount of storage space, I'd suggest spend the extra 50 bucks and go with the 16 gigabytes so you can be sure it will have a better chance of lasting you for two full years. I'll put a link down below where you can check it out on the Google website if you want to check the specs on it. Now they do sell this uh, through T-Mobile. For some reason, it's about $75 more, or you can uh, buy it through Amazon as well, but they charge you considerably more, so I'm not sure the reasoning behind that when you can go to Google and get it pure as they come for $349. I'm gonna switch over now to recording with the camera built into the phone. By the way, it's 1.3 megapixels on the front, eight megapixels on the back, which is okay. And I'll uh, try to record some birds, see if we have some out by the feeder right now, so you can see what the video quality is like with this. It does record in uh, full 1080. No birds at the bird feeder. Let me try to zoom in here. That's the zoomiest it will get. Don't have birds, but we can check out the, as seen on TV, topsy-turvy tomato planter. And the topsy-turvy strawberry planter that I planted some tomato plants in. They're doing nicely. Let me zoom in as much as I can. Let me get in as close as I can. That's pretty good. 
All right, I've got the phone switched around here so that I'm now recording with the front-facing camera, the 1.3 megapixel camera. You would use this if you were making a Skype call or uh, any kind of a video call. And this is what it looks like. All right, a comparison here of the screens. Over here I have the Nexus 4. The uh, settings I thought were the same for the screen, but they're not. The new Nexus 4 here is 1280 by 768, and my phone is 1280 by 720. So actually the new one is a much sharper picture. Okay, here are the phones with the exact same picture. Uh, the Nexus 4 is on top and my Galaxy Nexus is at the bottom, so you can compare the color. I would say my phone on the bottom is a little bluish, and uh, the new Nexus 4 is definitely a more realistic color. I've zoomed in on part of the picture here to some of the blossoms, and again you can see the difference in the color saturation on the two phones, the Nexus 4 on top and the Galaxy Nexus on the bottom. Another cool feature on all the new Nexus Android phones is they support NFC, near field communication, where they can talk to each other, or you can use Google Wallet to pay for something at the store just by taking your phone and tapping it to a little box by the cash register. I tried to get this to work between my Galaxy Nexus and the Galaxy S4, and I didn't have any luck with that, but I tried it out here, and these two phones had no problem, so I'll show you how it's done. It's pretty easy. I'm going to take a YouTube video here that I did comparing my new Canon SX280 camera and the, uh, the Galaxy S4 video and photos and I'm going to take that video and by tapping the phones together transfer that YouTube video so it'll play over here. Here's how you do it. You have to have the NFC feature turned on and the Android Beam feature turned on and I'm going to start this video up. Okay, I've got the video started and I've paused it, so I'm a few seconds into the video. Up above here, I'm going to go to the sharing option. And you can choose to email it or text it, whatever you want. And there's one here called Beam File, so I'm going to beam it over here. And it tells me it's now ready. Touch the two phones together and it will beam it. That's what it says. Now on the phone over here, it says touch to beam. So I'm going to touch it to confirm. And over here... YouTube app has come up, loading a video, and there we go. I was in the middle of watching this fascinating video of some YouTuber talking about the merits of the camera and the phone, and my friend said, hey, I'd like to watch that, so we did the knuckle bump, and now they can watch the video too. And one correction I want to make is I did find two tiny little bumps on the back of the phone, so that feature has been incorporated into it to raise it up off the table if you lay it flat so that the speaker phone will work correctly. Some people said so it won't scratch up the surface as well. Now the last thing I want to check on this is the sound quality for calls. It, it is a phone after all. So I'm going to try to call 1-800-PET-MEDS. This didn't go so well the last time I tried this on the Galaxy S4. Here's a cut of that clip. Let's try 1-800-PET-MEDS. Uh, 1-800-734-7. Six, three, three, seven. Speaker. Welcome to America's hottest talk line, ladies. Ah, uh, I thought I dialed. One eight hundred pet meds. Oh, that'll get your doggy excited. Standard Android four. Uh, dialing pad, so let's call 1-800-PETMEDS and put it on speakerphone. I'm going to get the number right this time. 1-800-738-6337. Call and speaker. Thank you for calling 1-800-PETMEDS, America's <coughs> largest pet pharmacy. If you place Sounds good. So the speakerphone sounded pretty good, certainly loud enough and uh, not too much distortion in it. And those are some of the features I've shown you here that the phone has. Pretty much everything that a modern day mid-range Android 4.2 phone is going to have. If you need that cutting edge stuff that only the Galaxy S4 will get you, well then you'll have to pay for those additional features. But this is a very good phone for the price. Now I'm going to do a video showing exactly the steps to do that um, phone bump where you can transfer the things, the Android Beam feature, if you want to go through it step by step. 
I'll also show you if you do mess the phone up, which that day will invariably come when you have no choice but to wipe it out, I'll show you how to reset the phone both in software and if you can't even get the phone to start up, how to do it with a certain combinations of buttons and hardware and I'll put that link for those videos right over here.